Right, today we are going to talk about the development of placenta, right? And we will start the concept from very basic, right from the very beginning, that eventually placenta comes from which tissues of the embryo and related cytotrophoblast. So you know that cell basically started, fertilized ovum started as a single cell, fertilized ovum, zygote, and then it goes into two cell stage and four cell stage, and then it goes into marula stage. And in marula stage, which is about 12 to 16 cell stage, uh, this in marula stage, what is really there that cells, right, which are bl called blastomeres, right, they have actually now making two masses. There is inner cell mass at marula stage and there are outer cell mass. Now, the cells which are in the inner cell mass, they are going to make embryo proper, right? All of you were originally derived from inner cell mass and whatever was made out of outer cell mass is no more present with you, right? Because outer cell mass will only do make those tissues which are going to support the embryo proper, right? And membranes surrounding the embryo proper and placenta and other supportive tissue will be derived from outer cell mass. So we can say that as early as marula stage where there is inner cell mass and outer cell mass, actually this is the outer cell mass which is the earliest cells which will eventually grow and make the placenta and other membranes around the embryo. Now, at next stage when blasto, suppose it has gone to the uterine cavity. Let me draw the uterine cavity here. Now at what stage, at what stage this will reach here, three to four days and once uh, this uh, marula reaches here, late marula, it will start converting into blastocyst, right? And when it is converting into blastocyst, of course there is outer cell mass very clearly and there is inner cell mass also and some fluid is coming in and fluid filled cavity is being formed, fluid filled cavity is being formed and around this time zona pellucida start disintegrating. So zona pellucida start disintegrating and then this blastocyst hatches out of zona pellucida. When it comes out, this blastocyst come out, right, then outer cell mass by this time now we are calling it special name cytotrophoblast. What we call it? cytotrophoblast and inside inner cell mass is now called yes embryoblast it is called embryoblast and outer cell mass derivative are called cytotrophoblast now cytotrophoblast cells they grow a little bit and especially they grow more on that side where the embryoblast is present and they grow relatively less on other side. This side is called embryonic pole and this is called abembryonic pole, right? And then what happens, cells which are present over here, they start making special type of molecules which help, which help this blastocyst to stick to the endometrium, right? Some of you may be knowing these molecules, they are called selectins, right? And at the time, by the time blastocyst has reached here, we have to see that what is the phase of endometrium. By the time blastocyst has reached here, endometrium is under the influence of progesterone because there is corpus luteum there which is producing lot of progesterone from the ovary and endometrium is under the influence of progesterone and progesterone treated endometrium is also called that endometrium is in secretory phase. So let me tell you what is the phase of endometrium here. 
right? As you know that basically uterine, yes, there are three layers initially. Outermost is perimetrium, then there is myometrium, and inside this layer is endometrium. Now this endometrial layer, right in second half of the reproductive cycle, right, it has been under strong influence of estrogen as well as progesterone. And what has developed that law, it has become highly vascular, right? It has become highly vascular as well as its glands have developed a lot and these glands are now going into secretory changes. Is that right? Plus, the cells which are present over here, those cells are accumulating glycogen and lipid. So what is, what is going on in the endometrium? Endometrium is getting ready for the incoming conceptus, right? It is getting warm, soft, red carpet welcome, right? So it is getting highly vascular, highly glandular. So vascular system is of course intent, with intention to provide extra nourishment. Glandular secretions are also very nutritive, plus the cells which are present over here, those cells are also have storing lot of glycogen and lipid. So this is the phase in which endometrium is there. And let me tell you, this endometrium itself is divided into three phases. This is one layer of endometrium, right? Then there is second layer and then third layer. Now, endometrial most superficial layer, this is called, yes please, which layer? Of, no. What superficial most layer of the endometrium? This is called zona compacta, compact layer. What is it called? Zona compacta or compact layer. And this second layer is? Spongy layer. Very good. It is spongy because it is highly vascular and having the basis of glands. And the third layer is called? Basal layer. What you have to remember that normally during menstruation, menstrual flow or after the baby the uterine lining which is shed that is basically compact layer and spongy form layer but basal layer normally does not slough off because these two layers in females during every cycle reproductive cycle they are disintegrated and sloughed off and again regenerate and repeatedly they go through this process we call them this is the layer which is functional layer which is the functional layer during every reproductive cycle right in second half in first half estrogen make it highly proliferative in second half progesterone make it highly vascular and highly glandular and secretory so actually this is the functional layer which consists of zona compacta and zona spongy form which basically regenerates every month and is lost also with every cycle. But important point which you have to remember that this our embryo, right, developing embryo or blastocyte, it is going to implant itself within the functional layer. It will implant itself within the functional layer. And as we know with every reproductive cycle on menstrual flow, the functional layer is lost, but once female is pregnant and blastocyst Yes, implants over here, then this layer should not be lost. This layer should not be lost. How we prevent the loss of this layer? On a microphone, we give an announcement there. Progesterone, actually what happened? Normally what happened, let's suppose a female does not get pregnant. Then from in the ovary, there is corpus luteum. Normally this is corpus luteum. After the ovulation, Corpus luteum supplies a heavy supply of progesterone to maintain this layer. But normal life of corpus luteum is around 10 to 12 days. So corpus luteum from the ovary keep on supporting this layer, functional layer for 10 to 12 days. If in 10 to 12 days pregnancy, this conceptus does not come over here, then corpus luteum automatically degenerate. And when a corpus luteum automatically degenerate, there is abrupt fall in the level of estrogen and progesterone. When progesterone levels fall, what really happens, these vessels constrict because these are kept open by the progesterone. When these uh, vessels undergo spasticity, then of course this layer becomes ischemic and then eventually necrotic and then sloughed off. 
and then when layer detaches uh, from the broken vessels, blood also come. Is that right? But of course this should not happen if female is pregnant because in pregnant female, this product of conception must implant itself in the functional layer. Now the question is that how this, this loss is prevented because eventually this layer will contribute in formation of placenta. Is that right? So this should not be lost. Now, how it is loss, loss is presented? Actually, when this blastocyst implant itself, right? What is happening that as blastocyst is implanting here in endometrium, which layer of endometrium now? Functional layer, right? This is cytotrophoblast and here it is inner cell mass and there are extensions from it, cytotrophoblastic cells and what really happens that by the time it is implanted over there, it is basically implanted in which layers? Who will tell me? Functional layer. Functional layer means zona compacta and zona spongy, spongy layer and this is what? Basal layer that remain there, myometrium remain there and perimetrium remains there, right? So basically it is implanted there. Now, the thing is that this layer should not be sloughed off. How it is prevented? Question go to this lady. Progest no, progesterone is normally produced by corpus luteum and it maintains this layer by keeping the vessels open. Is that right? Within 10 to 12 days after the ovulation, if there is no pregnancy, corpus luteum will undergo regression and when it will undergo regression then progesterone level will abruptly fall, these vessels will constrict and within two days menstrual flow will start. Is that right? I'm saying that if a female gets pregnant and product of conception implant itself here, right, then this layer should not be lost because eventually this layer is going to make the, going to play a part in formation of placenta but placenta will be made later right now we are worried that it should not be lost so that conceptus does not go along with it how the loss of this layer is prevented very good from where hcg come excellent excellent so what really happened this is the baby right that cytotrophoblastic cells which are here right they make an outer layer which is called syncytiotropho blast right cytotrophoblastic cells lose their membranes and their protoplasm fuse with each other. So multinucleated mass of protoplasm surrounds this product of conception. And this is called syncytiotrophoblast. And syncytiotrophoblast produces a special message. What is that message? Human chorionic chorio gonadotropin. And this goes to the ovary. And it tells the human chorionic gonadotropin gives a good news to Corpus luteum. Corpus luteum has receptors for HCG. So HCG goes and act on the corpus luteum and which was almost about to die, suddenly become very happy. Yes, that's true. And rather than dying, it swell up with happiness and it becomes swollen and it start increasing its cell number, right? And now this corpus luteal cell become more luteal. More luteal mean they start producing more progesterone. Right, and this is no more called simple corpus luteum. Now it is corpus luteum of pregnancy. So this is the baby product of conception which produced HCG, the good news for the corpus luteum and force the corpus luteum not to degenerate. Rather corpus luteum now survives and its natural life is no more 10 to 12 days. Under the influence of HCG, it becomes more active and produces heavy amount of what? Progesterone and super heavy concentration of progesterone brings further changes into this layer, right? This corpus luteum of pregnancy, right? What it is doing, it is producing now very heavy levels of progesterone. Of course, female will lose her menstrual flow. She will not have the menstrual flow. And this heavy concentration of corpus luteum will further change this layer, make it more and more vascular, more and more secretory and a very special changes that many cells in this area they become enlarged in endometrium many cells become in functional layer of endometrium many cells become very large and they start synthesizing a lot of you what glycogen and lipids right and these cells when they are 
accumulating so much glycogen and lipid, what they are doing? They are making the depots of nourishment. Vascular system is also for nourishment. Glandular system is also for nourishment. And at the top, these cells, which were previously also synthesizing glycogen and lipid, but they were supposed to be lost. But now they are not lost, right? Rather, they further start growing. And then we say endometrium has undergone a very special change, getting ready to support the product of conception in the long term. This change in the endometrium is called decidual change. What is this change? Decidual change. And now we see, say that this endometrium, which, are under, which is under the heavy influence of high concentration of progesterone from the corpus luteum of pregnancy, right, which is driven by the HCG, right, this endometrium is called decidua. What is it called? Decidua. So endometrium convert into functional layer undergo decidual change, more vascular, more glandular, and especially decidual cell appear. What are decidual cells? Cells loaded with glycogen and lipids, right? And we say endometrium has undergone decidual change. Which endometrium? Functional endometrium. Is that right? Any question up to this? So what is happening that by the time it starts developing inside, right? Endometrium is undergoing which change? Decidual change. At the same time, this product of conception is developing its own apparatus to get the nourishment from the mother, right? And the, this, this early stage of embryo is developing specific, op what is that? Operatus to get nourishment from the mother. That operatus is basically cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast and part of that will eventually make placenta. Now, I will bring this conceptus out and explain it here exactly what goes there. I am going to draw this structure over here in an enlarged fashion to see that what really happens in that area. Now, our conceptus is here. Let's start step by step. This was outer cell mass. Can everyone see this diagram? Outer cell mass, for a while I will just, what is this? By this time, when it is implanted there, if second week is going there, it has been converted now into which layer? Bilaminar layer. Above what is this here? What is this? Amniotic sac. And what is this here? Yolk sac. Is that right? Primary yolk sac or yolk sac. Now, and around here, cytotrophoblastic cells start making the columns, columns of cells. And these columns of cells, right, what are these called? Primary villi. What are primary villi? They are just extensions of column of cytotrophoblastic cells. And around it, what is here? Yes? Syncytiotrophoblast. Now, from this area, we have to develop the, eventually, placenta. The beginning of this goes like this, that actually, within the syncytiotrophoblast, cavities appear. What appears? Cavities appear, fluid-filled cavities appear. And these fluid-filled cavities, which develop in syncytiotrophoblast, right, these cavities, let's suppose I'm making these cavities, these are fluid-filled cavity, which appear in which area? syncytiotrophoblast and these cavities are interconnected. These cavities are interconnected. They develop all around, but I'm showing only in one area. This is called lacunar system. What is this baby doing? Baby is making special pockets in which it wants to trap the maternal blood. It wants to welcome the maternal blood into lacunar system. Is that right? At the same time, it is developing villus system, right, which will eventually convert into a mechanism which will take the nutrition and other substances from maternal blood to the embryo proper. Now, what really happens that there are maternal arterioles and there are maternal venules there, right? And what happens, some syncytiotrophoblasts erode some of the endometrial arterioles and venules. Syncytiotrophoblasts has a lot of destructive enzymes. Right? So it will destroy some of the arterioles, 
right? And when, where it will destroy some arterioles, maybe arteriolar blood, this is branch of spiral arteriole, arteriolar branch will fill, what is this? Lacunar system, right? But at the same time, this incisional trophoblast not only produce punctures into arterial system, it also destroys some wall of some endometrial. These are endometrial what? Venules. When it destroys some wall of endometrial venules, then naturally this lacunar system get connected with venules also. So what is really happening that this is cytotrophoblast, outside there there is syncytiotrophoblast, from the cytotrophoblast finger like projections of villi are developing. In between the villi, lacunar spaces appear and then endomet uh, a syncytiotrophoblast which is lying over the lacunar spaces, they start producing erosions or puncture in maternal arterioles and maternal venules. And because um, arterial system is high pressure system and of course no fun in telling venous system is low pressure system. So when maternal arterioles and venous system get connected with the lacunar system, what really happens that from maternal arteriolar side, blood start entering into what is this? Lacunar system. And from the lacunar system, blood will drain into maternal venules. In this way, maternal uterine circulation, right, is connected with the baby's trophoblastic lacunar system. We call this the beginning of utero-placental circulation. Is that right? So this is the beginning of utero-placental circulation. Any question up to this? There is no question. Right. Now, as baby is further developing, right, this all baby is now developing here, right. Now I will draw, let us suppose this is cytotropho, blast, right. And of course you know that what are these? These are the villi and what kind of villi are they? Primary villi because they are having just only cells. These are the primary villi. And of course, you know around that, what is there? Yes, syncytiotropho blast. And in the syncytiotropho blast, there were these blood filled cavities. These are all around, but I'm just showing on one side. Now what happens, look at the embryoblast. Embryoblast has gone into bilaminal disc. Is that right? And here is its amniotic layer. And here, it has made another layer. What was this? Yolk sac. Around this time, yolk sac cells, yolk sac cell start producing special type type of connective tissue, right? And that connective tissue is called mesoderm, right? And this mesoderm is being produced by the what is this? This is loose connective tissue. It is embryonic connective tissue which is being synthesized by yolk sac cells and this is being deposited outside the yolk sac and inside the cytotrophoblastic area. So this material start accumulating between, what is this? Yes, what is this? It is, this connective tissue start accumulating outside the yolk sac and between the cytotrophoblast and eventually it keep on spreading around and even it compresses the finds its way between the cytotrophoblast and amnio, amniotic cavity. So this is our amniotic cavity now. So what we really see that there is bilaminar disc maybe now around this time it is going to be trilaminar anyway this is bilaminar disc with amni amniotic cavity yolk sac and yolk sac has produced uh, extra this connective tissue is outside the embryo because this connective tissue is outside the embryo, we call it extra embryonic mesoderm. Why we call this extra embryonic mesoderm? The later on, mesoderm will develop inside this uh, embryoblast, right? When embryoblast will convert into trilaminar disc. The, and this mesoderm which will develop inside, that is called intraembryonic mesoderm. So please don't confuse intraembryonic mesoderm which will later on will develop in between here intraembryonic mesoderm this is derived 
intra embryonic mesoderm is derived from the epiblast but this is extra embryonic mesoderm it is not derived from epiblast it is derived from the yolk sac cells what's your question what's the function of the primary what is the function of primary uh, primary villi uh, it has not started any function now but when it will grow up it will become into secondary villus and tertiary villus once it will become tertiary villus then we'll see later that in placenta it will play a big role in exchange of material between fetal and maternal blood so you can say it is just a beginning of formation of some system for uh, villus blood supply is that right now so what is this you can speak i think everyone is having mouth and tongue yeah what is this extra embryonic mesoderm is that right now what will happen as time will go by the within the extra embryonic mesoderm what will happen a cavity will develop and when a cavity will develop then extra embryonic mesoderm stays only very near to what is this embryoblast right this this become the inner layer of extra embryonic mesoderm and another layer remain outside with what what is this cyto trophoblast so there then eventually extra embryonic mesoderm develop now extra embryonic mesoderm develop multiple cavities which become confluent with each other and eventually divide the extra embryonic mesoderm into inner layer and outer layer and at one point it is not disintegrated that point is called connecting star which will eventually become umbilical cord which will be connected with the placenta now the point which i want to highlight that this space is called initially it is called extra initially it is called extra embryonic siloam initially this area is called extra embryonic siloam but what really happens when all the multiple cavities disappear and it become totally confluent then we call this chorionic cavity so this is the origin of chorionic cavity from where the chorionic cavity came it was a cavity which was produced within the extra embryonic mesoderm which was separating the embryoblast from the cytotrophoblast am i clear to everyone